Hey everybody, Jason here again with GDT Basics. Today's pro tip for your mental toolbox is true position and bi-directional tolerances. So GDT is kind of a handy tool, uh, especially when you're using the position symbol. Essentially, it creates a diametric tolerance zone that more closely lines with the functional intent of a feature. But did you know you can allow more tolerance in one direction and less in another direction and still use the coveted position control? Let's dig into what I mean here. So we have a simple part which is an aluminum channel with two through holes on it. And we have a red block underneath it that's got two tapped holes. And obviously the fasteners are gonna go through the clearance hole and tap into the red block. And we wanna make sure the spacing between these holes as well as the spacing to the edge of that part is maintained and the tolerances are appropriately applied so we have a functional part. So we see a, a traditional coordinate dimension drawing here. And what we show in a lot of our lessons is you can take this coordinate dimension drawing and easily translate it over to using a GDT position control and gain the added benefits of those round tolerance zones. And so how you convert that is a quick, uh, easy calculation using the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, for those of you that don't want to use the math, I don't blame you. We have a position conversion calculator on our website, as well as we hand out the position conversion chart for a quick reference for our students. But essentially what we're taking is the X deviation in one direction or A, and then we take the Y deviation or B in one direction, square both of those, take the square root, and then we gotta multiply it by two because that was the radial. We want the diametric, so our diametric is multiplied by two. We get a diametric deviation equivalent to our X and Y deviations from the coordinate dimension drawing. So again, if you have a three thousandths deviation in X in one direction and a three thousandths deviation in Y in another direction, we type this into our equation here or look it up in the calculator or our chart, we'll quickly see that an equivalent diametric tolerance would be eight thousandths. So now we'll look at the tolerance zones associated with this feature control frame just to kind of understand it a bit more. So you'll see here the tolerance zones are centered at true position, or in other words, 1.25 away from the left surface or datum feature C, as well as 2.75 away from datum feature C for the right hole. And again, with basic dimensions, there's no tolerances on them, so you can dimension them any way you want. Uh, there's no stack up, there's no tolerances, so there can't be a stack up, right? So these two holes can deviate inside their tolerance zones any way they want. So that left hole deviated up to the left, the right hole deviated down to the right. And as long as those axes of these holes stay inside these tolerance zones fixed at true position, we have passed our position specification. So you can see here, there'd be a maximum distance between these two holes if one deviated all the way over radially four thousands and the other one deviated the other direction four thousands, our max distance between the center of these holes would be 1.508. But what if the design intent was that the pattern of holes, the two holes together could shift in X quite a bit more than they could shift in Y. In other words, we're giving more tolerance laterally than we are giving tolerance vertically. So you can see here we have a larger tolerance zone locating the beginning of the pattern, but hole to hole, we still have that tight pattern to make sure that it still fits on top of that red block that had the two tapped holes. So functionally, we can allow more tolerance in one direction than we do the other direction or bilateral, right? So this now no longer meets this design intent. How would we change the GD&T to match this design intent? Well, let's take a look at it. If both of these holes drifted over, now they both could be perfectly 1.5 inches away from each other, but they've drifted outside their tolerance zones. So functionally as a pattern they work, uh, but based on our tolerancing scheme, they would have to be failed, even though it might be a functional part, because again, Remember, the functional intent of the part allowed these holes as a pattern to drift. So how would we get around this with GD and T? Now, how we accomplish this is multiple single segment. And it might look scary, but it's really not that bad. It's simply just two position feature control frames stacked on top of each other. The top one has a position feature control frame of 20 thousandths with respect to A, B, and C. Now we have with respect to A, B, and C, and that locks in all six degrees of freedom. So this 20 thousandths diameter tolerance zone is locked at true position and cannot move. And the axis of each one of these holes has to be inside this tolerance zone. But as you'll see, this allows a lot of distance between the two still. And so we need to further refine this to make sure we adhere to our uh, specifications of the part. And so we refine that even tighter, but we don't refine it tighter to all the degrees of freedom. We dropped off C here, if you can tell, 
and we no longer are going to control the lateral location and only control the vertical location type. So we'll introduce the tolerance zones, and again those tolerance zones are eight thousandths of an inch in diameter for these smaller tolerance zones. But those tolerance zones are free to move in location. If you can tell here, they'll shift, and as long as you can get the axis of the feature to fit in both tolerance zones, it passes its specification. But again, since we are controlling it as a pattern, these tolerance zones, these two small ones, have to remain 1.5 inches away from each other exactly. So you have to be able to align the axis inside both tolerance zones for both holes simultaneously in order to pass both of these specifications. So to recap here, you'll see that the tolerance zone on the bottom can deviate left and right and try and capture those axes simultaneously because we did not reference datum C locking in that final degree of freedom. So the top feature control frame is controlling a loose tolerance, allowing us to deviate quite a bit left and right, as well as up and down. But then we go ahead and refine that up and down to our original tight requirement of 8,000 while leaving that degree of freedom that C is allowing open. So we can see a kind of a unique advanced tolerance zone happening here that directly correlates with the functional intent of the part. Hopefully this helps clarify things for you. Uh, again, thanks for tuning in. Our goal is to be your best source for GDT information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand GDT on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our GDT community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our GDNT and print reading quizzes, download helpful charts, and access articles written by our training experts.